usually talk about our uh, team in these sessions, but I'd like to take a minute to kind of congratulate the university and President Moorhead on the latest uh, U.S. News and World Report of the 13th ranking in public institutions. I think that's pretty special. I know we sell that hard in recruiting, and anytime you've got a top 15 university public institution, it, it sells itself, and that's something that we've been really proud of, and uh, I know the university's proud of that stat and continue to climb in those rankings each year. So really proud of that, and with that, I move on to MTSU, Middle Tennessee. I got a lot of respect for their coach, the guy I've known for a long time in this profession. He helped me at a very young age, learning how to recruit on the road. Um, I traveled and recruited some when I was working for Coach Hatcher with uh, Coach Toxville. He does a great job. Um, always just had tremendous respect for the job he's done. You know, he's one of the longest tenured coaches at his uh, at his school in the country. <coughs> Haven't been there, I think, since he was six or seven. And uh, he does a tremendous job. So I got a lot of respect for him. You know, his son's a quarterback. He's a really good football player. Um, they beat three power five schools in the last six or seven years. And uh, they got really good athletes. We really good football team. And uh, our focus kind of turns to them. And that will open it up. Coach, Reed, it's easy for fans and sports writers to say <clears throat> you want to see your uh, team you cover, the team you, you follow play a SEC opponent or Power Five every single week. How do you feel about games like this, Austin P to open, this game, UMass at the end? Yeah, I got a lot of respect for these programs. I got a lot of respect for the student athletes that play at these programs. I think that uh, games like these a lot of times are an opportunity for their programs to survive and stay alive. And financially, they're important to some of these programs. So I have mixed emotions about it uh, when it comes to that because I think when you look at the NFL and week in and week out, playing the caliber opponents they're forced to, to play, it forces parity on more people. And I've said before, I've, I've been in favor of whether it's a nine game SEC schedule, it doesn't matter to me. That's it's not something that we shy away from. I think it's good for the fan base to have the better games or the home and homes. I think those things are good for college football, but you have to look at it through two people's perspective. And sometimes these programs wouldn't survive. And I'm a big advocate for football in general. And I think that they need these games to survive financially. And without them, some of these programs may not be able to survive. Um, Coach, as you as you speak of the quarterback at Middle Tennessee, I mean, he's a guy that's had back-to-back -back pretty good performances over the year here. Um, as you kind of look at his passing ability and how Middle Tennessee predicates the offense upon what he can do, how important is it to get more of a pass rush this week? And how would you evaluate your – Pass rush to support. Yeah, we're always looking at group pass rush. I mean, I think that you're, you're never where you need to be, but that's one of the areas we want to improve. Two things have to happen in pass rush. You have to cover them long enough to rush them, and you also have to stop the run to force them to pass the ball. And we're a run-stop first team. That's what we pride ourselves on, which probably takes a little bit away from the pass rush, to be honest with you. So it's an area that I know since we've arrived, we've been pretty good on defense here, but You'd say one thing, you'd say we've been insufficient in pass rush. Well, you don't get both worlds. You can be really good at pass rush and not real good at run defense. So we pride ourselves on that. But it's something we really work on. I think it's really important on these guys not to give a quarterback a long time to sit back there because he's really good at it. They also, on the, on the other hand, know that there's, it's hard for them to block some of more guys every down in and down out. So they get rid of the ball quick. So you have to be careful about how many times you overdo the rush because they have an incredible screen game. And the quarterback is a very good decision maker. He knows where he's going with the ball. And they have really good skilled players to get the ball to. Kirby, what went what, uh, what through your mind Saturday when you guys had to insert Cadence in the lineup there in the second half? Um, and how did he grade out and have Sandra Thomas' availability this week? Uh, Andrew Thomas is still ankle sprain. He'll be out today. Um, Hopefully be back for the game, but it's, that's still not known. We'll see how he is tomorrow. Today's going to rehab and work on it. I know he's been uh, doing some stuff on the treadmill. We hope he's getting back. Um, Kay, uh, I was excited for Kay as much as I was disappointed for Andrew because Kay's worked hard. He's, you know, came in the mid year, worked really hard. He's, uh, I, the biggest reaction I had was I'm glad we practiced the way we do. I'm glad that he has to go against really good players day in and day out, so that's not unusual for him. And he did some good things when he went in. You know, I think the overwhelming 
consent was when we went in that like it just like took over a lot of that had to do with the body blows that occurred before that uh, but he did he, he had some mistakes he did some things that, that weren't real good but he did some good things find positive in it but also find area for improvement A quick follow up on that. Did did you were you surprised that Cade Mays went in? I know you guys cross trained. I think ultimately you leave it up to to Sam that he was the first left tackle. Or maybe maybe I'm wrong. Was that surprised? Yeah. That he went in? Yeah. You don't think we talked about that? You don't think we met about that? Uh, there, there are no surprises when you're prepared. Yeah. So for us, it's that's been talked about long before things happen in the game. Sometimes in the game, you make rash decisions and. You don't make in the in the heat of the moment the right decision. So we talk about that every game. Who the first this is first this is what happens if he moves it to go down. Who's third? You got to do that in every position because in a game things can happen fast. And it was a surprise that he went in. That was a decision that we all made as coaches based on how we practiced. You can't make that decision in the game. You got to practice the players where they have an opportunity to play. In case you've been working at left tackle and left probably. Coach, you talked about your wide receivers uh, you know, blocking on the perimeter was very high on them, what they did uh, after the game the other day. In particular about Tyler Sims had that one really huge, huge block. Is it just uh, the, the, the want to, to to be able to do that, something that's just come natural for him, something he's had to learn? Well, I think physicality is a learned trait that he's learned over the course of time. First of all, he has a stature and body that's 200 pounds. It's thick, it's physical, he's tough. Uh, I mean, basically, we're not going to play you if you don't do that. So the reward is I get to play in the game and catch the ball up my block. And he had two, I won, but two really good blocks. Everybody saw the one on me calls, but the DeAndre Swift run, he knocked his guy to the ground early in the game as well. So he's proven to be a uh, physical blocker. He catches the ball well. He's got good speed. He's built like a running back. And um, if he continues to get better and practice better, he can be a really good player for us. Coach, with the constant changing and evolution of tackling and what's a healthy tackle and what's a non-flag tackle, have you been forced to teach your players different ways to tackle over the last year or two? No, we really haven't. I mean, we've never taught them to lead with their head or aim or target for someone else's head. We certainly don't teach that. Um, we practice a lot uh, putting, which I call putting, is when you wrap up without taking them to the ground. And I think Coach Tucker says it all the time to the defensive guys, it's harder to thud than it is to tackle. So when you can go tackle a guy in a game, it's usually easier than thudding. And thudding, you have to hit him properly. <coughs> you got to wrap up without going to the ground, which is a safer, more practice way to tackle. So it's sometimes harder on our guys in a practice to do the thud than it is to go physically tackle someone uh, to the ground. You know, we always talk about aiming for midsection, aiming for the, the lower spot and not ever leading with the head. And those are things that you, I know we've always taught, or at least everywhere I've been, we taught, we didn't teach guys to target. And that's important for the game so you don't lose guys. Coach, uh, beyond uh, a victory, what are you looking to get out of this game and how much competition is there still within the team for playing time, starting positions, things like that? Uh, as much as ever, you know, I mean, I've, I've got my message set for the team today and it's really about that long. It's not anything about who we play nor any disrespect for Middle Tennessee. It's totally about us and competing within practice. Uh, we've got some really good competitions going on where guys are battling for playing time, guys are battling for spots. And the best way to measure that is not against a scout team player, but against a good on good situation, which every day, including today, we'll do good on good situations and try to find out where guys are and continue to earn playing time. I think the only way you develop your team towards the end goal, which is to be as good as you can possibly be by the end of the season, is to improve during the season. And that's where I think we can separate ourselves because we can improve during the season. We have enough depth to go against each other and continue to improve, and that's the end goal for us. Coach, is uh, this weekend's weather having any kind of impact on how you guys are practicing? Do you have an eye on that? And uh, separate question, have you had any conversations with DeAndre Baker about his interception and ball placement at the one-yard line? Well, the first, first one with the weather, I don't uh, I've seen what's coming. And certainly uh, a lot of false and prayers go out to people in the South Carolina community in the area that may be uh, hit by it. But 
right now, we don't think it's going to affect us a lot other than wind, possibly. And there's not a lot we can do to control that. So we're going to continue to work on Middle Tennessee and get ready for it. As far as DeAndre, obviously, I was disappointed that he would do that uh, prior to crossing the goal line. I think it's a, uh, an effect of not having many opportunities to do that. You know, he had almost the exact same situation in the spring game. And we went back and showed him that and said, hey, here, cross the goal line and, and, and go across and handle the ball the right way. He didn't. So he'll get some extra practice doing it today. <laughs> um, <laughs> Coach, if you uh, take a look at Rodrigo, like he should probably work to this, this point in the season, 15 to 15 on touchbacks, had uh, another big field goal there at the end of the first half. I mean, if I just look back at the beginning of last year, the year before, you know, he was in competition for the starting job. And as you look at him now, can you speak on how much of a how much of a weapon or an asset he is on special teams? Yeah, he's been incredible, to be honest with you. I think uh, our special team staff does a tremendous job of making sure he's fresh. Uh, he does a tremendous job of taking care of his body. Um, it's, it's shown in the last two games with the power and drive mm -hmm. consistently. I mean, most guys wear out as the game goes on. Maybe you have to kick another kicker, or maybe you know, don't kick him up. He just continues to pound the ball and does a great job doing it. He's a leader on our team, and he's awesome to work with. I mean, he's become a weapon, and uh, we have to use him as such. Coach, speaking of Leonard, can you talk about the heat at the South Carolina game, you know, on the sideline, blurring the sun and all the oxygen tanks are used? I probably wouldn't be the best to talk about that because I don't, I, mean, I really don't even notice the heat. It's a coach because I'm not in pads and we're out there in it every day. Um, I certainly know some of our players when we go over and visit with them on the sideline are using the oxygen tanks, and I think Ron could talk to you more about that. Um, I've been told it's more of a placebo effect and that it, it actually is not. It's, it's mental more than anything, but we'll supply our players with everything we can to help them be at their best. Uh, Rat poison question. Yeah. Last year, as you all start going on this run, it's kind of a little newer, so it's probably a little easier. This year, when you start rank where you are and you have results to kind of validate that, any different message, any different approach? I don't think so. I, I really think the approach and, and the deal is that the pats on the back sometimes are not real. The pats on the back are all conditional, and uh, we're not into conditional love or conditional improvement. We want to improve unconditionally. We want to be loved unconditionally. And, and the way you do that is by trusting and believing your teammates and getting better. And we're going to try to sell this team today and this week and every week on getting better because we can't control all these outside forces. We can't control what other teams do. We can't control what people say. All we can control is how we work. And if the leaders buy into that message and understand that we have to get better to get where we want to go, then we usually tend to do that. Coach, I know you addressed this in Dustin a little bit, but just watching college football highlights, it seems like this two quarterback thing is becoming a bit of a trend. Do you see that looking into the future where teams are going to work two quarterbacks just because of the injuries and the situations at a lot of these top schools? Yeah, I certainly think that it's very important to have three quarterbacks on any roster because when you don't have three, you're a play away all the time. And I think that's no better evidence than in the NFL because you know, those guys usually carry three on the roster and they have emergency guys. But um, it's become more and more of a trend because I think A, guys have left more often now, and B, guys get injured because they're spread and they're running more. So you've got to have the ability to protect the quarterback and you've got to have to have two quarterbacks that can play. Um, <clears throat> after the game, you were talking about how you know letting the air out of the out of a defense playing or or just a team physically and, and those things. I wanted to ask you know you talk about the standard playing to the standard of school board all that stuff. Does it does it kind of change not not necessarily change but do you find it a little different when when you're seeing your team do that what it was able to do Saturday and other games and your ability to coach as well that you're ability to call games, Jim's ability to call games, and, and also the players and kind of their attitude on the sideline. Does it does it have like a ripple effect? I don't know. Are you asking if there's momentum in being able to get a lead? I I, I'm, I'm just saying, does it does it change the way you guys coach? I mean, obviously, I know the message is still the same and you want them to be physical, but when you see your team starting to do that, is, is it something that changes the way you guys are coaching the players and, and, and maybe you switch gears a little bit? I think so. I mean, I, I, I certainly 
comes from the beginning whistle to the end whistle exactly the same all the time, because I don't think the scoreboard matters. So if the scoreboard doesn't matter, why, if we're down 25, 30, whatever we were down at Ole Miss, should I be coaching different than if we're up 25 or 30 against somebody at home? I just don't see the difference in that. Because I believe in what we tell the players, which is playing to that standard and playing like the scoreboard's not there. So if you coach the same way, then the expectation for the player that goes in, if you're up or down, is exactly the same. What kind of, uh, you talk about Tyler Sims and what a good blocker is. What kind of improvements do you want to see uh, Demetrius Robertson make where he gets on the field maybe more earlier? And is that one of the areas that you like to see improvement from him? Yeah, I don't know that Demetrius didn't get on the field um, earlier. I thought Demetrius played um, a good bit and, and will continue to. He's trying to compete in practice and will always play the best players here. And, and those guys are at the top of their game will have a good rotation going. I think right now at the wide position we've got good depth because we've got guys that can do different things. A lot of guys that are really physical, maybe a fast guy, maybe a vertical threat guy. But at the end of the day, when you turn the tape on, the guys that get open are going to be the guys that play. And South Carolina did a good job in press of uh, pressing some of our guys. It was a good thing we could run the ball because they had our hands on a lot of our wide outs. And creating separation is really important. Two more questions? Last question. <laughs> Kirby, do you hope to get um, Justin Fields' work uh, when the game's in the balance, so they get him quality work, or you know, obviously the, the goal is to, to win the game if, you know, any way you can? I think uh, the important thing for Justin is that he continues to improve. He, he's worked hard, and uh, we want him to continue to improve as a player. And that's what's going to make our team better, and that's what's important in his future. Continue to do that. We'd love to get him an opportunity to get in this game.